Congressman, one of the things that your book addresses is the issue of privacy, and we talk about digital dignity. But one of the things that has surprised me about sort of the human reaction to this whole debate is, you know, we talk on the air about privacy all the time. And yet, you know, every single day, uh, you get a cookie on your, on, your, on your computer. And invariably, uh, I think everyone just clicks, OK, yes, I accept that, or no. But they, they, they probably spent less than two seconds even thinking about it. Jonas Saratus wrote about this issue over the weekend. Um, you know, there's so many of these instances where you hear about a hack or that your you know, information has been stolen from this website, and then we go back to the same website. <laughs> what does that say about us? We may think we want something, and then we just don't follow through. There's a great point, and this is one reason why we need to have the default be uh, that you can't have these companies take your data, uh, because otherwise people just click and give them uh, consent if they the obligations on them. But here's why it matters. It matters maybe not to your daily life, but let me say this. QAnon has grown because these companies were able to collect that data and target individuals. The uh, ability of these companies uh, to target teenagers, which is Instagram has caused suicide and depression, is because of data collection. The ability of the big lie to spread uh, or climate misinformation to spread is enhanced when they are able to target based on data. So even if an individual says, ah, it doesn't really affect my life, it's certainly hurting society and it's allowing them through algorithmic amplification to really target the most vulnerable. Many of these companies, as you know, are in your district, in your state. Long term, do you think that they have benefited society or not? Yes, absolutely. I mean, I'm proud to represent Silicon Valley. Look, uh, we wouldn't be having this conversation if it weren't for the for Apple. I'm doing it on the iPhone. We're doing it on Zoom. Uh, individuals today have more information than probably the president of the United States had in the 1980s. That's because of Google. Uh, there is no doubt that Me Too and Black Lives Matter uh, have benefited from social media platforms. But the problem has been that there's been a blind spot, a lack of humility in understanding all of the negatives, the contribution to January 6th, the polarization, the misinformation, uh, the lack of equality, the growing disparity of wealth. And so what I believe is we need to have more humanistic values in thinking about how to apply technology so that it actually can benefit everyone. While I have you here, I want to ask you uh, about something about this is about the credibility of, I would argue, Washington, uh, which is a debate around whether Congress people like yourself should be allowed to trade in the stock market, given all the information that you have at your disposal, given the folks that you represent. And I raised this issue because uh, there was a capital trades analysis showing that you were actually were one of the uh, most prolific uh, traders uh, this past year, uh, an estimated $34 million in estimated purchases and $19 million in sales. That surprised me, Congressman. Well, it's not. I don't trade at all. I'm up for uh, banning trade. It's uh, my wife's money, uh, uh, which I have no uh, actual legal rights to. Uh, it's before we were married, and uh, I don't tell her what she can do with her money prior to marriage. But I'm actually for banning uh, stock trading and uh, have never traded stocks and support a ban on members of Congress uh, not, and not trading stocks. I don't think, though, that should apply to spousal assets prior to marriage. I think that would be unfair.